Okay, here's a question where we need to actually define the polynomial and then write an equation and solve it. Now I know that with a problem like this, you could probably just use trial and error to figure out the answer, but we're trying to actually go through the skill of writing the equation and solving it so that when we get to harder things that we can't spot the answer, we've got our skills ready to go. So John is 23 years older than Tom, their ages add up to 49, how old are they? Now we want to make one equation that only has one polynomial in it. So I'm thinking we need to define one of these uh, people as, let's call it X. Um, now let's say, let, let's let Tom be X years old. Now here X is a number of years. Now if Tom is X years old, you need to think how old is John? And if you'd like to write it down separately as a sentence, you can, or you could jump straight to making the equation. Let's just be really clear. Let Tom be X years old, therefore, these three dots mean therefore, John is X plus 23. Does that make sense? Because he's 23 years older than Tom. Now we know something else. Their ages add up to 49. So I can take Tom's age and then add it to John's age. Tom and John, and that equals 49. The first thing to do when solving this is to gather up like terms. We've got x and another x, so that gives me 2x plus 23 equals 49. Now to get those two x's on their own, if I subtract 23 from both sides, take it away here and take it away there, then this side of the equation will just have the two x's, and this side will give me 26. Now I need to halve both sides to find out what 1x is, and x is equal to 13. Now I need to go back and actually answer the question. It says how old are they? Now I've said that Tom is x years old, so if x is 13, then when I go to write my answer, I need to clearly state, therefore Tom is 13, and I can easily work out how old John is. I need to add 23 to this, so John must be 36. And you can do a quick check there that they do actually add up to 49 to be sure that you've done it right. Okay, here we have a question where the perimeter of a rectangle is 60 centimetres. Its base is four centimetres longer than its height. What are its measurements? Now, first thing you might want to be thinking, and you can always jot things down as you think of them. I know that the perimeter of a rectangle, I need to do two lots of the base plus two lots of the height. Now, I know the perimeter, 60, Underlining keywords can help. But I don't know the base or the height. I've got two unknowns here, and I really just want to write an equation that has one unknown. So I'm going to come up with an expression for one of these, either the base or the height, and then an expression for the other that's based on that. So I think the easiest way to go here is to choose H, and let's say, let H be the height. I could have chosen X, of course, but H is nice and easy because I can remember then that H is the height. Now, if H is the height, what will the base be? Well, read the question again. The base is four centimetres longer than the height. So whatever the height was, H, the base will be H plus four. Okay, now I can substitute the height and the base into my formula. I can also substitute in the perimeter that I know. So I'm going to start with the perimeter. 60 equals, now I need two lots of the base, that means I need two lots of all of this. So thinking of that as being in brackets is going to help you to remember that you need two lots of all of that. And then I need two lots of the height, and that's easy because the height is just h. Now to solve this, first thing to do would be to expand out the brackets. So that gives us two lots of the h, and we need two lots of the 4 which is 8, and our extra 2 h's. Now tidying up this side, we've got 2 h plus 2 h, which is 4 h. So 60 equals 4 h plus 8. Now we're trying to get the h's on their own. So subtracting 8 from both sides is going to help us to do that. So if you'd like to write down a little minus 8, minus 8. 60 minus 8 is 52. And on this side, the 8's are going to disappear. We just have 4 h. And the last step, if we want h on its own, then and we have four lots of h, we need to divide by four, and we need to do the same to both sides. 
so that we'll have the H all by itself. And on the other side, we need to figure out what's 52 divided by 4. And the answer is that H will be 13. Now, we weren't asked what H was. We were asked what are the measurements of this, of this rectangle. So when you're finished, you need to put your answer back into plain English. I would write, therefore, height is 13 centimetres. See, I've actually included units, whereas this answer down here didn't have units in it. And the base, well, let's think the base needs to be 4 centimetres longer than that, so it'll be 17 centimetres. And I can just do a quick add up there to see that if I've got base of the, um, 17 and height of 30, 17 and 13 is 30, and if I then double those, that makes sense. It's going to come together for a perimeter of 60, so I must have done it correctly. Okay, another example like the one using ages. We have one table and four chairs adding up to $1,500. We know the table costs $600. We want to find out how much each chair is worth. Now, I can hear a lot of you already thinking, I can do that in my head without using any equations or any algebra at all. But we're trying to use an easy one like this so we can build our algebra skills and solve our equations correctly so that when we get something that's much more difficult than this, we've got some good methods in place. So the first thing we're going to do if we need to use algebra is to find what our pronoun will, will be. Now, I know how much the table is. It's the chairs that are the unknown. So let's let, let x be the cost of one chair. In dollars, we can state that to if you like be really specific. All right, now to write the equation. We have four chairs. So if x is the cost of one chair, it will cost us 4x dollars to buy four chairs. And then if we add the $600 table to that, we know that the cost of the whole lot is $1,500. Now to solve for x, we need to get 4x by itself. Start by subtracting 600 from both sides. That will give us just 4x on this side. And over here, 1500 minus 600 is 900. Now we need to divide both sides by 4, because we know how much 4 chairs is. To get 1 chair, divide by 4, divide by 4. Don't forget you can use your calculators anytime you like on questions like this. Simple way to divide something by 4, halve it, 450, halve it again, and we've got 225. So we still want to finish not with an x equals something, that doesn't tell me anything about a chair. It's asked me how much is each chair, so I need to put my answer in plain English and say, therefore, each chair costs $225, and that's where you can bring your units back in to make it a nice, clear answer in plain English.